This month on Connections. We begin in the loop at a place known around the world for its impressive collection of Impressionism and so much more. The Art Institute is our first stop. Next, we're on track heading north as the CTA teams up with the city to crack down on graffiti. Our trip north by rail takes us to a place where Oktoberfest is celebrated year-round. Our destination? Lincoln Square. Finally, as we head back south to our last stop, the Merchandise Mart, it's that time of year again, time to crown the winners of the CTA's annual rodeo competition. Enjoy the end of summer by exploring the city on the CTA. Glad you've joined us. I'm Dale Rivera. Welcome to Connections, the only show on television dedicated to getting you where you want to go on the CTA. Chicago is considered a world-class city and there are countless reasons why. Here you'll find many one-of-a-kinds, including one of the finest art museums in the world. The Art Institute of Chicago is our first stop. One way to explore the world without leaving home is to visit the Art Institute of Chicago. The city's Art Institute has long been a popular destination. Each year, more than one and a half million people visit the museum to view its collections of art and artifacts from across the globe. So you can really travel the world without leaving Chicago just by coming to the Art Institute. And you learn not only the beautiful objects that were left to us by previous cultures, but you get a little sense of the story of the people behind them. The building itself is more than a century old. Founded in 1879 as the Chicago Academy of Fine Arts, the museum moved to its current location in 1893 in a building constructed for the World Columbian Exposition. And our founders had very lofty goals. They wanted to create plural museums, schools, and libraries of art for the betterment of the community. They believed that a great city had to have a great museum. Chicago's Art Institute is proudly ranked as one of the top museums in the nation and the world. Here you can see famous works like American Gothic and paintings by artists such as Vincent van Gogh and Georgia O'Keeffe. The museum also has some of the finest collections of Asian art. And don't pass up the miniature rooms that continue to attract young and old alike. The Thorn miniature rooms are really beloved by people who grew up here and remember them as children, although adults love them too. I remember taking British Prime Minister John Majors and his wife through there and it was hard to get her out. Of course, many visitors come to the Art Institute just to see the Impressionist and Post-Impressionist works. The museum's famous collection includes more than 300 paintings, sculptures, and works on paper by well-known artists like Monet and Renoir. We want people to have a personal experience with an original work of art. You can't replace that in a book or online. You really need to see the colors, the size and scale. You need to get an emotional response to what art can do to you. You need to think about how was it made. Just be confronted with the wonder of it all. A trip to the Art Institute wouldn't be complete without viewing one of the most popular paintings, George Seurat's A Sunday on La Grande Jatte. And until September 19th, you can not only see the painting, but learn more about its history and the artist in a special exhibition. We borrowed works from all over the world. We have about 40 studies uh, for the painting itself. And so it's a big exhibition. It's absolutely beautiful. People should get their tickets and come because people seem to be loving it. Chicago's Art Institute has something for everyone, and families are encouraged to visit the interactive exhibits that allow children to explore the world of art firsthand. So whether it's your first trip to the Art Institute or you've been many times, remember there are guides to help you navigate the museum. That list of top 10 visitor picks is a good place to start. Or just talk to our really knowledgeable volunteers at the information desks and they'll help you get started. There might be something you haven't thought of before and they can send you in a new direction. 
Chicago's Art Institute is located right downtown, just steps from Michigan Avenue, and the CTA can take you there. Here's how. So next time you're traveling to Chicago's Art Institute, be sure to hop on board the CTA. Here's an update on the CTA's largest capital improvement project to date, along the Cermak branch of the Blue Line. Ribbon cuttings marked the opening of the final two of eight stations to be rehabbed as part of this massive $483 million project. Stations at Damon, formerly the Hoyne Stop, and here at California. It's a $15 million facility, and it shows, and I'm sure that it'll be here and be used by this community for the next 100 years, just as the last one was for the previous 100 plus years. These two brand new stations in Chicago's Lawndale and Pilsen communities come with all the modern amenities, like new elevators and escalators. And now, with features like wheelchair turnstiles and TTY telephones, they're fully accessible for customers with disabilities, making all 11 stations along the branch ADA compliant. Customers can't help but notice the improvements. It's like improving the community. It's a total change, and I think everybody benefits from it. With all eight rehab stations now open, the CTA will focus on the final, less visible details of the project, like signal and communications upgrades. We're so proud of the progress of the Blue Line uh, renovation project, and we look forward to completing in January and having faster, more accessible, safer service. What's not to love about Chicago's skyline? It's one of the most impressive in the world. Now imagine seeing it from 110 floors up. Well, you can experience that vantage point from high atop the Sears Tower. And to get to this world-renowned site, just hop on board the CTA. Towering over Chicago's loop is one of the city's greatest icons, the Sears Tower. As one of the tallest buildings in the world, Sears Tower reaches 1,450 feet into the sky. The building weighs more than 200,000 tons and has the equivalent of 16 city blocks of floor space. So just how did this colossal structure end up in Chicago's skyline? In 1970, Sears Roebuck was the largest retail store in the world. The company built the tower in three years to serve as its new corporate headquarters to bring Sears employees together under one roof. They decided they were going to build this major building in Chicago, and then once plans started moving along, they realized if they added to it a little bit more, they would actually build the world's tallest building. And so that was how the whole thing got started. Sears Tower was designed by architects Skidmore, Owings, and Merrill, and there's a story to go along with the tiered construction. One of the funny stories that we don't really know is true or not is that someone um, went to knock out a, a cigarette out of their pack of cigarettes, and that the way the cigarettes fell out of the pack became the idea behind the bundle tube construction of the building. Although Sears is no longer headquartered in the building, each day roughly 10,000 people go to work at one of the more than 100 companies housed inside Sears Tower. Serving as a major business center, the building has more than 43,000 miles of phone cable and some of the fastest elevators in the world. And it's those elevators that zip you up to the 103rd floor to the visitor's sky deck. On a clear day, the observation deck can give you a 360-degree view of Chicago and the surrounding area. You can also like look out the windows and see like four other states. I think that's kind of neat. Chicago's such an architectural mecca. It's such a gorgeous, gorgeous city that to see it from here, you get a whole different perspective. And while you're getting a bird's eye view of famous Chicago landmarks like Soldier Field, Buckingham Fountain, and Navy Pier, be sure to check out the new Sky Deck displays, set up for both children and adults to enjoy. There's a section on architecture, there's a section on sports, there's a uh, section on Chicago 101, so where did the name Chicago come from and why are we called the Windy City? Um, Chicago was Hollywood before there was a Hollywood, so there's an entire section on arts and film. So we really cover 
what's important to Chicago and why Chicago is Chicago. While you're looking down on the city's landscape, you might also notice a few familiar sights, including a passing CTA train. Here's a look at all the ways you can get to Sears Tower on the CTA. Chicago wouldn't be Chicago without the Sears Tower, and the CTA can take you there. The CTA has a number of ways to inform customers of its products and services to help make travel smoother. Information about all the CTA has to offer is even available at your fingertips. All it takes a little basic training. Whether it's bike and ride, sightseeing, or the blue line, when you want to learn more about the CTA and its programs, just pick up a brochure. The CTA prints more than 40 brochures for customers, covering everything from safety while riding to special routes to fare cards. They really lessen the legwork for our customers. We showcase special routes, special services, um, places that they may not even know that they want to go. It really helps them uh, find out information a lot quicker and easier. You can spot CTA brochures throughout the city of Chicago at popular tourist locations like Water Tower and the Chicago Cultural Center. You can also pick up brochures at hotels throughout the city, at CTA stations, and of course at CTA headquarters. Brochures are also available on the CTA's website, www.transitchicago.com. Customer Linda Larson finds CTA brochures very useful. In fact, she even sends them to out-of-town visitors before they arrive in Chicago. The brochures are very helpful and it's very good to send to people because it makes it more relaxed. They kind of know what they're doing already. The CTA designs its brochures so they're easy for everyone to understand. Brochures posted on the CTA's website are also available in an accessible format for visually impaired customers. Chicagoans aren't the only ones picking up information on the CTA. Some of the most popular brochures are made especially for tourists. The Downtown Transit Sightseeing Guide is just a really great resource for visitors and tourists. Um, it has every single downtown hotel, it has every attraction, it tells you how to get there on CTA bus or rail, and it's just it's a wonderful resource. If you want more information on a CTA brochure, be sure to call the customer service line at 1-888-YOUR-CTA. And if you go online to www.transitchicago.com, you can not only view the CTA's brochures, you can print them out. The CTA's brochures are made just for customers, so they'll have everything you need to know about riding public transit. The city of Chicago works hard to keep our city clean, especially when it comes to graffiti. It's a goal shared by the CTA, and together they're using watchful eyes and the latest technology to stay on track. Graffiti. It's an ongoing problem tackled each day by the CTA and the city of Chicago. Unfortunately, while we're combating the graffiti, there's still more graffiti going up, so we're kind of playing a tag with, with the taggers in essence, but we've got a very good handle on keeping it under control. Graffiti isn't just a nuisance or an inconvenience, it's a crime. In order to fight it, the CTA and the Department of Streets and Sanitation work together to graffiti blast. The purpose of graffiti blast is to remove all the graffiti throughout the city to make a cleaner, better city. Graffiti blasters get a good perspective on hard-to-reach locations by riding the L lines. So three times a week, they're out on the CTA looking for new markings or tags. The crew rides it, writes down the locations, and then will in turn go and service every location that they find. 
The CTA also keeps its own system clear of graffiti by removing it as quickly as possible. Painted graffiti is removed every day by the CTA. You might see janitors either painting over tags or erasing them with graffiti remover. What we've, we've created this um, zero tolerance program where as if there is graffiti seen out there, rail janitors are instructed to remove it immediately. The CTA also takes preventative measures in fighting graffiti. Glass that has been etched isn't just replaced, it's also covered with a special vandal shield. In addition, perforated aluminum is also used over glass to deter etching. And what that does is, is prevent them from etching large amounts of glass. So we're basically putting that inside just the windbreakers for now and using the vandal shield around the rest of the stations. Because graffiti is considered vandalism, the CTA aggressively prosecutes vandals with the help of the Chicago Police Department. In fact, over the past few years, the CTA has helped prosecutors file charges against hundreds of vandals in criminal and civil court for damaging CTA property. Vandals cost the CTA more than $4 million each year in cleanup expenses. So while the CTA works hard to eliminate graffiti, they appreciate help from customers. So if you see tagging in progress, please report it to a CTA customer assistant or call the CTA. You can either pick up a public phone that's on the CTA platform and press star 1 and you'll be connected to the CTA or they can contact the customer assistant. With everyone working together, we can wipe out graffiti and keep the city clean. October is right around the corner and for a lot of people that means Oktoberfest. Nowhere in the city can you find celebrations like you'll find in a quaint neighborhood just steps from the Brown Line's Western Avenue stop. Our destination, Lincoln Square. Just seven miles north of downtown is a historic Chicago neighborhood that is experiencing a resurgence and a newfound reputation for being an ideal community to live or visit. This month, we raise a glass Prost. to this north side community known as Lincoln Square. It's a great neighborhood. It's got a great neighborhood feel. There's um, plenty of stuff to do, good restaurants, bars, people are friendly, and it's just really uh, easy to live here. It's a great, great part of the city. Billy, how you doing? Hey, buddy. Welcome to Lincoln Square. Oh, thank you, thank you. Take a stroll? Yeah, let's take a look around the neighborhood. For a tour of the neighborhood, we met up with Billy Lawless. As a business owner here, he's got his finger on Lincoln Square's pulse and tells us this is one neighborhood that is very much alive. So tell me why Lincoln Square is such a great destination. Well, I think the main reason really is it's, a, it's like a little town in the middle of the city. You know, there's a great mix of uh, old businesses, new businesses, some really good old restaurants and some new bars and restaurants coming in the last few years. Here you'll find everything from Greek restaurants to old-fashioned ice cream parlors. But Lincoln Square is widely known for its distinct German flavor. And there are places you should add to your must-see list. Well, they definitely got to check out the Mars Delicatessen. It's like a really total old world German delicatessen. You can get all the old sausages and candies, fine liquor from Germany. As for dining options, there are any number of German restaurants, like the Chicago Brauhaus, offering up a German experience you won't soon forget. At Chicago Brauhaus, you'll find German food and music every night except Tuesday. It's like a year-round Oktoberfest. And speaking of German celebrations, get ready in September for Lincoln Square's annual German-American Fest and Parade. From September 10th through the 12th, you can fill up on a weekend chock full of German pride and tradition. There's much more to Lincoln Square than just food and drink. Sink your teeth into some unique history, dating back as far as the Great Chicago Fire of 1871. After the Chicago Fire, this was the first area outside the city limits that they were able to build uh, timber frame houses because they couldn't build them in the, in the city limits because of the, the fire code. And then they extended the, uh, the western uh, transportation line in uh, the early 1900s and basically people started flocking to the area. From then on, the architecture of the neighborhood thrived. There's the Louis Sullivan designed Chicago school style building from the 1920s. It's currently home to the Museum of Decorative Art. Or there's the Conrad Salzer branch of the Chicago Public Library, German neoclassic in style and built in the 1980s. And if it's art you're looking for, you'll find it all around. 
There's the Lincoln Square mural, the Lombard lamp, the Giddings Square fountain, the Maypole, and a statue of the neighborhood's namesake, Abraham Lincoln. When you're duly inspired, you may even want to create some art of your own. To get those creative juices flowing, take a class at the Lill Street Art Center, off Montrose on the edge of Lincoln Square. We have a whole arena of art classes. We have classes from ages two all the way up. We have ceramics classes, all aspects of ceramics. We have um, metal smithing, we have drawing, we have painting and we have a newly opened fiber department. So there's just about every aspect of, of arts and crafts you can find here. And if you're into the art of collecting, Mr. T pities the fool who doesn't come out to Quake Collectibles on Lincoln to find that Star Wars action figure missing from their collection. Godzilla would be happy to help you find what you're looking for. Everyone from kids and puppy dogs to seasoned pub crawlers and sci-fi fanatics just may find that Lincoln Square is where it's at. And the best way to get there is on the CTA. We'll show you the way. It's a great area to live, it's got a nice feel to it. There's still a lot of mix of old Chicagoans who live here like all their lives. So people like that kind of neighborhood feel. And that feel gives all who visit or live in Lincoln Square an experience to savor. And remember, the CTA can get you there. Grab your lasso, it's rodeo time again. Every summer, the CTA's very best employees compete in the annual bus and rail rodeo. They're the dedicated men and women who work hard every day to keep your commute on the move. Drive them, wash them, and fix them. It's that time of year again, the annual CTA Bus and Rail Rodeo. For this year's rodeo finals, more than 100 CTA employees competed for a top spot as rodeo winner. This is the 24th year of the CTA's rodeo competition, a jamboree celebrated by the entire Chicago Transit Authority. Oh! 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 Wait a minute! It's extremely important because this is CTA's opportunity to recognize and celebrate the uh, skill of the best employees of CTA. They have really idealized what CTA is all about. The CTA Rodeo Finals are broken down into nine different categories, covering every skill from driving buses and trains to fixing fare card machines to cleanliness. This is a chance to showcase their skill levels in a competition, pitting the best of the best against each other so that we can come up with a champion in each of the categories. Each month, we'll be introducing you to the winners of each category, beginning this month with a team that keeps the CTA's trains running safely. Meet Willington Anthony, Kenneth Wheeler, and Orlando Berrios. They're the top team when it comes to rail maintenance. These three guys are all energetic. You know, they have been into this rodeo, looking forward to it this year for a long time. They've had their team together for four years. Uh, there are three excellent employees here at Stokey Shops. While Willington and Kenneth are engineers, Orlando is a mechanic. Together, this threesome combined their skills to take first prize. I feel fabulous, I feel great. I mean, I put a lot of hard work into it and it's paid off. While this team has previously placed in the rail maintenance competition, this is the first time they've won first place. This year's rodeo finals were grueling. The competitors not only battled each other, they win against the clock. Each competition has a 20 minute time limit. You see some teams, if they're organized, the work flows very easily. They get the answer, they solve the problem. Other teams, you can see the time gets short and the pressure of that time seems to affect them. But troubleshooting is something that Kenneth says he enjoys, especially on the job. It's different every day, you find different problems. And I like the troubleshooting part and helping out, figuring out problems. 
course, one reason for their success is teamwork. The guys work together efficiently and effectively, helping each other out along the way. So congratulations to Willington, Kenneth, and Orlando for taking first prize. And stay tuned for stories on all of the CTA's 2004 rodeo winners in the year ahead. We're heading to the CTA's headquarters at Chicago's Merchandise Mart. For years, customers have been stopping by to do everything from buying fare cards to picking up the latest in CTA gear. Soon, however, the CTA will relocate its headquarters, and we'll check it out on our last stop. The Merchandise Mart is a true Chicago landmark. The Mart, as it's known, was completed in 1931 by Marshall Field. At that time, the building was the largest in the world, and it was designed to serve as a wholesale center for the entire nation. The building was sold in 1945 to Joseph Kennedy. The Kennedy family owned and managed the property for about 50 years. Today, the Merchandise Mart still ranks as the world's largest commercial building, so big, in fact, that it has its own zip code. Currently home to numerous interior design showrooms, the Mart has also been home to the CTA for nearly 50 years. You may have visited the CTA's seventh floor headquarters over the years to get information, assistance with a fare card, or even purchase CTA merchandise. Now, after 50 years as a tenant, the CTA has opted to change from renting to owning, resulting in a savings of $7.7 .7 million annually. In October, the CTA will move to 567 West Lake Street, and all the same services will be readily available for customers. So stay tuned next month as the CTA's base of operations moves to a new location. We'll tell you more about that next month as we begin another adventure around Chicagoland. I'm Dale Rivera. Thanks for watching Connections. For more information about the CTA or to use the RTA's trip planner, visit our website at www.transitchicago.com or for customer service matters, call 1-888-YOUR-CTA. For travel information, call the RTA at 836-7000 from anywhere in the Chicago area. Chicago and 40 suburban communities with connections beyond. CTA, take it everywhere.